What? Wanted on the telephone? In an aeroplane? Broken controller? Hello, sir. Just ringing to wish me a nice something. What? What am I doing up here? Well, I'm off on my holiday. This morning, another Tiswell? Oh, no. Don't oh, you put it like that, sir. Stop the plane! Stop! Hold, hold the takeoff! We'll have to go back! I've got another one. I thought I'd finish. Have to go back! Go back! <laughs> Sorry about this. I'm in some confusion with the. Uh, sorry, sorry. 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 Look, if this is the if this is actually the last program, these poor yeah. two people, Tom and Sue, have been out the back there for 30 weeks. Let me see if get them. Where? Just sing away every week behind this. Hang on. Are you there? <laughs> well, I just thought, because it's, it's actually apparently definitely the last two weeks. Yeah, no, no, no. Week after week, just singing away. Yeah. Just singing away. Yeah. Oh, no. I thought perhaps the people at home might like to have a look at you. Oh, Mr. Darren. <laughs> All right, Mr. B. Are you all right, Susan? <laughs> That's. Yeah. Yeah. Today, the very last show, of course, of the, and we are thrilled to bits that we're going to have cracker it is. We are thrilled to bits, and we've got something really out of the ordinary for you today. How many of you would have known that today on Tiswas come in great escapologist, great train robber, Ronald Biggs? Hooray! 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 Where's Biggs? Uh, he's just gone to the toilet, Mr. Carson. <laughs> How long ago? Uh, about six hours ago, actually. Six hours? Yeah. He's gone. Oh, it's all right. He can't escape because I've still got the cuffs on, you see. <laughs> well, that is tantamount to idiocy, and there's only one way of getting out of that. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> 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 Again. Unconvincing start to the morning. They'll probably continue like that till half past twelve. You probably know this is the last of this series. It's a very, very sad morning. As you can tell, we're all laughing. Going, yeah, great, minute to finish. <laughs> I'm going to say a special happy birthday to little Ollie Spencer, who's going to be six on Wednesday. 
Also, happy birthday to Rowena Bartlett and Stephen Rees of Warsaw. I think of Sally's voice last till uh, half past Isn't twelve. Isn't it a miracle? Second voice. Everybody we met in Bradford last Sunday, yes, in Mansfield thank... last. There's extraordinary scenes on the Bucketeers tour the last few days, and also everybody we met in Sun Coldwell last week. Yes, and of course, Paul mentioned the Bucketeers. We are going to be travelling around the country quite a lot during the summer, so we're going oh. to catch up with some of you, and we're going to be in Bournemouth on April the twenty-fifth. You sound very, very croaky, Sally. I sound do. Very, very I think croaky. I'll get better as the morning goes on. Though, okay, please. remember uh, underrates last week. It was the last one that we'll uh, oh. set of this series, and we we said to you we wanted all twenty-six letters of the alphabet. Some somehow combined into an under eight painting or collage or drawing or whatever. We've got some beautiful, beautiful, Super. it's amazing what kids can do if you give them little sort of things like that. We said, well, all you can do is use A, B, C, D, all the letters, you must use them all. Now let's have a little look, look at this one. That's from, that's from Sam, Sam Whitaker. That's Whitaker right. of Marlborough Gardens, Whetstone in London. It's only five and a half. It's quite cute, isn't it? You can see it? the A in the middle. Actually, when you look at that one carefully, they are all there. Yes. A lot of them dropped down the bottom. Yes. Moving on, this is from seven-year-old Adam Broadhurst of 10 Live View, Atherston. And walk the Warwickshire. And that's Graham Kelly. Graham isn't? Kelly, well done, Sausage. They are all in there. There's a very, very large, complicated list on the back of that where all the A's and B's and C's and D's and E's and F's are, but they are all in there. Because he's from five from Scotland. I didn't Scotland. Know, I thought there were only about three on that one. And what are we sending these people? T shirts? It is what t shirts, uh, painting sets. This is a look of horror on my secretary's face. <laughs> painting sets. <laughs> right, well, Anything else we can find. The producer's face, you have to yeah, finance it. No problem, he's gone, <laughs> he's leaving. Emily Cole, I think we've moved on to Emily Cole of, of Meadowcroft Road, London. And this one, I think, must be. That's Kelvin Oram. The Oram family, actually, very. Uh, Regular Tiswas viewers, because I think we had the Orams. I'm sure this is the same lot from uh, Bedfordshire. I'm sure they were actually up by the year's winners themselves yes, I running, running, that. Running, running a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Yeah. Tracy Rudge is next. Tracy Rudge, well done, darling, uh, from Barking down here in Essex, aren't we? That's uh, an interesting sort of impressionist look at the whole uh, scene. I've no idea what's happening in that picture. And you mentioning that. the Oram family. There they are again. The next one comes from Kira Oram. That's right, who's, who's uh, a yeah. year younger than the Obviously other one. Obviously, a very but, talented uh, artistic family. We thought because they sent in separate ones and they actually were very good. Why not? And they're all in there. You can see again, actually, they've used cute, one or two of the letters yeah. twice. But I didn't say you couldn't, in fact, because there was a yeah. query over that. I didn't say you couldn't. I said you must use them all once, <laughs> but you can, in fact, use them twice as well. Right. John, Joanna Blair, there, six years old, age, from Wellingborough, North Hants. Right. Last little lot. Yeah, Darren Smith from uh, Coventry, just on the road. Well done, Darren. Uh, quite a, I've no idea what that's doing. Some sort of desert scene, I think, that is. Uh, Mark Shepherd, there you are, the usual traditional bright red roof, brown front of the house. Blue Lawn. Um, Mark Shepard from down there in Hampshire. Christopher Priest from uh, Malden down there in Essex, uh, where the battle was all thousands of years ago. Christopher Priest history as well, it's brilliant. Well, and also so Daniel Foster, Christ. finally Daniel Foster from Somerset. There well done, Rob. Simplistic. Fantastic. Great. But the, those are the, the runners-up, so you'll be getting painting boxes in the post and also... Wow, uh, generous to a fault today. There's anything else we can find left in the office, with probably newspapers or something. <laughs> the first actual winner, hang on. What the last time I've it should look Aww. like this. There. And you're, you're Andrew, aren't you? Andrew who? Well, now, where's your painting on in the middle of the woods? You had it down there, didn't you? Is it that one? Hello. You had it just now. <laughs> Sorry about this. Here's the pipe bomb. Bob, you've got it there. By your hand there. That's it. That's it. Pass it there. That's it. Good, now, let's have a look at this. This is excellent, actually. How old are you? That's super. Superb. Isn't it? How long did it take you to do that? Quite a long time. What, what, what sort of you've got? You've got uh, tin foil and stuff there. What, what sort of material did you use? That's those little things you use off cake stands, isn't it? Yeah. Um, doilies. Um, doilies. Um, did you do this at school or at home? At home. Did you? What, is, what does your mum think? Is she pleased with it? You've got Rupert yeah. Bear up in the top left corner. That's excellent, isn't it? That really is, that really is very, very nice. OK, well, we'll, try and, uh, we'll try and all sign that at the end for We'll, we'll, we'll uh, send you back to... Where did you come from? Um, <laughs> What's that? Um, about, well, Quiet, please, behind. Sorry about that. Nice. <laughs> what? <laughs> cool. OK, who would you like to say hello to? You're probably on that one up there. <laughs> A long list. Here we go. What a madhouse he was Grandma and Grandpa, <laughs> Nana Peg, Great Grandma, <laughs> Stephen, David, Nicky, Neil, and all my friends at Elmhurst School, Mr and Mrs Anderson, Helen Best, Maureen, Andrew and Richard, and Paul, Paul Widdick. Widdick. Who's he? Is he your friend? He's my dad's friend. He's your dad's friend? OK, morning, Paul Widdick. Typical deal. I'll tell you about 35. Typical, so he's probably a bit young for Tisbee, actually. OK, well done. Let's have a look at the second one. So, well, yours is very complicated. It's very it's complicated. Very complicated. I'll, I'll get the little chap up first. Well, I'll, I'll wait for it. There we go. Hello, darling. What's your name? Ben. And where do you come from, Ben? Uh, Dorking, Surrey. Oh, it's not far from. England. England? Mm. <laughs> I thought it probably would be England, Near England. Ben. How old are you, darling? Five and You're a half. Five and a half. When are you going to be six? Uh, do you know? Uh, 
Yes, November the 29th. Oh, well, that, that's nice. Right, let's have a look at that. This is fantastic. Chris, can you hold one end of this? Uh, it's, it's actually got a little bit of... you got your wires twisted again. Hang on, nice. Hang about. This is fantastic, Ben. Is this your idea to do this? You see, you have got all the letters of the alphabet, and from each one... It's one of those cross-your-heart ones, this one, I think. Uh, uh, is hanging sort of little things, yes. all relevant to Tiswas. It's got into a bit of a muddle here. <laughs> I just found a pair of suspenders in the middle. I, I think that's yeah. supposed to be a garter. Oh, sorry, no. I might even flash one later. Who knows? Right, let's try and... Right. The there we are. I think we've almost got that together. That's sure. absolutely super. Did you, how long did it take you to do that, then? Two days. Two days. Well, two days every single minute of the day. Mm. I can imagine. It's really great. Uh, did you tell me your friends at school you were coming on Tiswas? Yes. What did they say? You don't know what they said? Do you want to say hello to a lot of people? Yes. That. Have you learned to read? Yes. Oh, yes, yes, of course you have. Why do you keep walking away from me? Stand there. There you go. Right, I want to read your list. If you look into that camera there, Ben, OK? Right. Nanny, Poppy, mm. Ollie, Guy, Ollie. Big Ben and Michelle, uncles and aunties, great-grandparents, Granddad picked some school and my dad and brother Tom. Well done. Mm. Very well read. You've learned to read very quickly. You're five and a half. <laughs> Can I put this down there, please? Oh, Charles? sorry, Chris. I forgot about you. <laughs> right. Hold that one. Be good, lad. Right, let's hold right. that up behind us. Have a third one. In fact, the third and minute. fourth one, because we soon have got two of them. Yes. Right. Mind well, the jellies as you go. I've got the chairs all over the seat. Good. Such a celebration. <laughs> right. Yeah. Finally. They are right. It's obviously a team effort, no, is it, your right. painting? It's, it's Jane and what, what's your brother's name? Let me move you back. Jane and Stephen. And, and this is oh, yours. Who actually did it? You did it between you, or did, did you do most of it, Jane? Well, yes, what? Yeah, well, 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 yes, you did most of it. Did you? What, what did he do then? Which bits did what he did do? What did you do, Stephen? Did you have to do what you were told, did you? She bossed you around, did she, being the eldest? You like that? How do you get, how do you get on, you two? Do you, do you fight much? I bet you do. What's she like as a sister, Stephen? Is she all right? Not too impressed, eh? Not too fussed. <laughs> do you never fight? I bet you do. Do you look after him when he's in trouble, when he's crying and things? No. Do you look after you? Are you both at the same school? Yeah. Are you? What, what, what's your school like? You don't like it much? Why? You don't like anything much. <laughs> what's it called, your school, that you don't like much? Clifton School. OK, well, who would you like to say hello to, darling? You've got to sort of do You've it got between a list, you. Oh, you. Is this for the pair of you? I hope so, Chris, otherwise we'll be here all night. Sorry about this, Dickie. You may be starting a little late. My this goodness, morning, you might well be. <laughs> may not be a world of sport at all. Off you go, darling. Not a custom pie, isn't that? Daddy. Put that one down. Nigel in Kitchen. Nigel in Ward Lynn. Sorry. Sorry, you just start. Where are you, darling? Diane, Debbie, and Dean. John and Shirley. <laughs> Michael and Annette. Michael and Annette. Grandma and Annette. Grandma and Annette. Audrey and Jim and Fudge and Annette. Nana and Papa and Paul. Julie, Samantha and Peter. Gainer, that is. Gainer and Kirsty. Mrs. Toon is my teacher. Abigail and Ellie and Sarah. And all my friends at sixth and school. Just please trying to find the prize. Harry and moment. Kenny on their engagement. The anyway, Sal. Uh, Sorry, amongst all this, this got, got the prize, sweating mass of yes. children. I'll tell you one thing they have got. Is, That's right. Uh, Sorry about that. I've just knocked one out. Sorry about that. Right, they've got these very nice. Um, <laughs> oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Soft cuddly toys. The, the yeah. usual uh, fluffy chairs. That's right. Somewhere. They've got the a new book by Roger McGough. You tell me. They've oh, custard pie uh, money boxes. They've got this was bookmarks. Added to bed trays. Fun, fun bunch of family things. Smurfs. What's oh, bucking in Spain? You going on holiday this year? Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? One of those lights. You don't know yet, but you know you're going somewhere. Well, you've all got all these prizes. You've all got the same thing. Right. For, so, the, for the final time of this series, nice to have the three. Oh, sorry, three, four, four of you. Get them! Well, it's getting slightly crowded here this I've morning, Chris. A, a little poem here from Roger Phillips, who says he's 11. I don't believe that. It's from Shoebury Ness. I've got a little budgie. He really is quite cute. He drinks gin instead of water and does impressions of a newt. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> you can't tell that. I haven't, I didn't. <laughs> but here's a clue to the next item. Goodness gracious, goodness gracious, how's about that little guys and gals? <laughs> Would you believe an amazing, amazing, amazing group of gentlemen? All the way, all the way. Here they are, goodness gracious. 
The bottom line. Wonderful. Yippee. Wonderful. Good luck. Like Good luck. All day I faced the barren waste without the taste of water. A living. And I want to say hello to the Kings Norton Citizen Band Club. So hello, my good buddies. Hope you're all snug in your 20. And this is a nine. Work keep a custard pie for Smokey and Busby. So be happy on your skateboards. Keep your windscreens clean and don't be seen. And it's a 10 10 till we do it again. Break oh, a break. Keep going, oh. Sal. I am keeping going. I'm going to be learning more of this CB language to oh, come and astound you with when I come back on September the 5th. Whoopee. Right. Quo we here last week. Sorry? I don't understand that. Never mind. Uh, Quo we here last week. They signed <laughs> some copies of their album. They also brought us some lovely T-shirts along, and they asked the question, uh, what year did these symbols start appearing on the back of their LPs? Well, it was 1972, and the three lucky winners are uh, Sarah Ledbetter of Four Oaks, Sutton Coldfield, West Midlands, Steve Murphy of 87 Lansdowne Road in Gloucester, and the third and final winner, Kim Tipper from Derby Road, Stratton, Burton on Trent. Well done to you lot. Good in, in the post. Must say good morning to everyone we met at the uh, Quo concert last week. Actually, oh, it was terrific. Well. I've still got a bit of HBN. Actually. Yes, Very a few famous. people might have noticed Chris, in the audience. It didn't stop. <laughs> Two hours. Serves you right. Yes. I think we'll move on now, and we've got uh, quite a nice clip. It's from Run Cooper well, Run. And this demonstrates actually the dangers in the wild that a young baby cougar has to face. That's Chris, what? what week is it? March 28th. Yes, and when do we finish the series? March 28th, half past 12. So that's today. And you just said that oh, they would see sorry. what will happen oh, next yeah, week, right. you see, so they can't. Oh, can sorry they? about that. Well, you'll never ever know whether or not that nice little oh. cub actually. Oh, yeah. Chris, you've got oh, to. Well, it ends up being torn to big big pieces baby. in that eagle's jaws. Ripped to shreds by a you'll never know. You can't do that. You'll never know. You must show it. Come on, show it. OK, let's go and rejoin the dear little cub and see how it's getting on with the eagle in this clip from Run, Cougar, Run. 
Dear little cub actually did escape after we were only spoofing along there. Because it's a very big day uh, for us here this morning. It's also a very big day for race enthusiasts. We can now bring you live commentary from the 1045 from Wolverhampton. <laughs> with Wojay's Thesaurus. I don't know, Dr. David B. What do you get if you cross the authoress of Wuthering Heights with Wojay's Thesaurus? You get a one-day Thesaurus quiz. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Sally, I've been living at my digs for four years, but I'm not staying there another minute. Hey, I've gone off. Gone right off. Hey, why is that? I just found out they haven't got a bath. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Sellers, don't you realize that you only get to live your life once? No use in staying up to lunch, just roll with the punch. There ain't no time. The elbow man of mystery, clairvoyant extraordinaire, prophet unparalleled. What's got stripes and swims underwater? I don't know, David. What's got stripes and swims underwater? A newly promoted police frogman. What? It, it's a whip tickler. This is the stuff. It's really terrific. <laughs> David. Yes. I've just lost my job, you know, through sickness and fatigue. Why was that, Hoodie? Well, you know, me boss, he got sick and tired of me. Let's see you smoking with your own interpretation. Dance with the rhythm of the street in your life. It never changes at all. The beat keeps burning on This ring from a millionaire. Oh, what was his name? Woolworths. Oh. Hey, Hoodie Elbow, you're supposed to be so extra intelligent. Oh, what do the following three words or expressions mean? Par de deux. That's father of twins. Brandish. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> an... 
<laughs> Stop it. <laughs> That's another word for a stew. <laughs> but you're supposed to be so very intelligent. I what do the following words or expressions mean? Ah. Pardy der. Father of twins. Branded. Hey, who the but you're supposed to be so very intelligent. What do the following words or expressions mean? Pardy de. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's do it again. Stop. <laughs> Come on. Shut up, Lenny. Hang on. Hey, who the but you're supposed to be so. Hey, who the elbow? You're supposed to be so very intelligent. What do the following words or expressions mean? Pardy de. Father of twins. Brandish. Oh, that's another word for a cereal bowl. Crick. <laughs> Crick is the noise made by a Japanese camera. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Me, good friends, I'm just doing the rapid change from the Dr. David Bellamy to your old friend and compadriot, Algernon Winston Spencer <laughs> Churchill Razamataz. Right. <clears throat> we've had loads of letters. Well, we've had a few letters. I write one, and that was from my mother. And she was asking us what the Tis was team will be doing during the summer break. Now then, Chris had so much water thrown on him during this series that he's going to see a building specialist to have a damn course put in. <laughs> Sally's going to join the Navy on a battleship. She was going to go on a submarine, but refuses to sink to those depths. <laughs> Albert Grumble has been training in the studio for his new job. He's going to be a road sweeper in Venice. Spit is going to marry his fiancée in Westminster. In other words, he's taking Abby to the Abbey. <laughs> the Phantom will be in Blackpool on his special diet of black puddings and blackcurrant flan. And finally, I'm going on one of those pound stretcher holidays. That means I can go anywhere for a pound as long as I'm on a stretcher. <laughs> but now it's competition time! <laughs> Lenny uh, very clearly told you there, there's a competition coming yeah, up. We've had to see uh, last eight and overs of the series. Um, very special prize this morning. We've got this uh, marvellous Shakespeare carbon fibre fly rod to be won because we're going to gear the competition to a bit of fishing. I know a lot of you do a lot of fishing in the summer. Marvellous carbon uh, fly rod from Shakespeare. Thanks very much for that. There's a special prize. And plus all the usual things these spit the dog t shirts, these spit the dog puppets, the Charlie the Monkey puppets, the uh, normal sort of science t shirts, t-shirts, compost corner t shirts, all sorts of goodies. So we're going to be showing you, as usual, we're breaking it down into three during the course of the morning. We're going to be showing you various pictures of fish 
Now, we're going to be showing you pictures of fish. Now, let's have a look at this first one. I want you to have a look at this. I want to know what this fish is called and what's its Latin name. OK, question number one. Hang on, Chris, hang on, hang on. Stop it, stop it. How many have we got us today? Is our which programme? It's the 30th. Yes, so that means that we're not here next week. This is our last show, and you've just set a competition. How can we be here next week to tell them who's won the prizes? Oh, that's right. Oh, so, oh never mind. Well, I'll keep the fishing rod anyway. That'll be very useful. Sorry, well, I thought it would be handy, a fishing rod. Just because we want to have a fishing rod. Right, something out of this budget. Yeah, whatever. You Here's the rumbleweed! rumbleweed. And hi there, hi there, hi there. Goodness gracious, now then, on this special edition of Jimmel Fix It, would you believe I'm going to fix it for <laughs> no less than me to become a grumbleweed. Goodness gracious, I'll sing their latest hit record. And this is especially for, we'll put all the gear on now, especially for Janine and Richard, Colville of Leeds. How's about that then? Off comes the barnet. Dearly log, dearly log. <laughs> well, a clapper on. A transformation indeed, because we are now... Any ready time now, lad? He's your great baker, he's our dad. <laughs> it's grand working here at Bread Shop. <laughs> My dad thinks nothing of getting us up at half past four every morning. <laughs> we don't think much of it either. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Hargreaves. Here, tell your young Albert to get his hands out of them charts. He's got jam all over his balaclava. Come on down to bread shop. We've got loads to suit you all. We've got buns and scones and fresh cream cones. Here you're welcome to call. Come on down to bread shop. Just get back at mill. It's all baked fresh every day. So come and get your fill. Come and get it. Hey, mister. What? What's the difference between a boy gingerbread man and a girl gingerbread man? Nay, nee, there's not that much difference, but there's that much more gingerbread. <laughs> right. <laughs> you see. Who's He the sausage dog, the sausage He the stinky fool, the doggy now speaking. Sausage. Get off, you daft beggar. Come on down to bread shop. Just get back here, Mill. Be. It's all baked fresh every day. So come and get your fill. You see. Power to the people! <laughs> That's all I do of him. You daft beggar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're doing. And music! And music! And music! This is Top of the Pops, is it? Is it uh, Top of the Pops? On your back, some beans are out of it. <laughs> We've got bread bats, bath buns, tea cakes, sausage rolls, pork pies, donuts, French horns, cobs, crusty loaves, apple tarts, mid tarts, black currant pie, gum truffle, that bloke's down here throwing things. I think it must have been dead down here. What are you doing? Have we got any crisps? Get out, you cheeky oh. young monkey. Come on down to bread shop. Just, Just step back, back at mill. It's all big fresh every day. Come on man, get, get your fill. Come on down to bread shop. Just step back at mill. It's all big fresh every day. Come on get, get your fill. So if you're having a bit of a shindig or an anniversary. And we're baking, you haven't a clue. Come on down to it, bread shop. Me dad knows what to do. Hey, it's grand here. Just turn right at Doug and Partridge. You'll see how a shop.
for corner. The man you don't trip over me mother, donkey story, front step either. He's a great baker, he's our dad. Right, what are you doing down Pick here? Up, 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 up. I just want to say a quick message actually for this is quite serious actually. Joanne Duell is missing from her home in Hemel Hempstead. Uh, Joanne, your, your parents are very worried about you. Could you please give them a ring, please, uh, if possible? I'd just like to say a quick uh, hello to some of the lads in the forces. Sorry, oh, I haven't got a lot. Again. Well, I haven't got time to say hello to everyone that's written in, but there's just a few garters I'm flashing here. So hello to the Royal Marines, HMS Birmingham, HMS Submarines, HMS Glamorgan, HMS Osprey, HMS Seawalk, and HMS Ariadne. I hope to have more time uh, when I'm uh, back in September to uh, say hello to, to a, well, things like that. Like an and I promise, I must just say one thing, I promise lots of people ask for photos. I promise during the summer I will get that organised. Right, good. What's your name? Have you noticed all these extraordinary balloons we got this They're morning? They're lovely. They're good. If you, if you like... No, I've lost time. Let's go, good girl. What's your name? How much do you weigh? You must be about 18 stone. Oh, that's rude. Who would you like to say hello to then, darling, on probably that one? Oh, it's confused me this one. We've got one without a red light on. That one? Yeah. That one, the rather attractive gentleman with the uh, beard on. Who would you like to say hello to? It's not, is it? Who'd like to say hello? Yep. My daddy. Come on. Your mummy, your daddy? My daddy. My mummy's here. Where are you from? Um, Dublin. Dublin? Ireland. Ireland. You're coming away from Dublin. Extraordinary lengths people get to. Yes. Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry, apart from our camera, there's one, one area I've neglected completely. Excuse me, sorry about this. All right. Morning! It's a chance to go the other way for a chance, isn't it? You've gone Not me, sir, not me. Happy birthday yesterday to David Bella. Uh, happy birthday, David, if you're watching. He's uh, lives down in Brighton. Now, I think we'll move on with the results, if anyone can hear me, <laughs> of uh, last week's Shout eights and itself. overs competition. I'm doing my best. Uh, we showed you three people. We asked you to identify them and tell us what they all had in common. Well, they were all monarchs. And uh, also, we showed you three dates and asked you to put those dates against each monarch and uh, tell us what uh, the significance of the date was. Let's have a look again. Hey, 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 sorry. <laughs> Do you mind? Let's sit down. Can we have a look at the first picture, please? It's like a mad Hang on, another one. Down, darling. <laughs> there we are. Well, that, of course, was Henry VIII, and the date with him was 1534, and the significance of that uh, date was that it was the act of succession, which basically meant that the king wanted to get a divorce, the pope wouldn't let him have one, so he had an act of parliament passed to enable him for the sake of providing the country with an heir to the throne, to divorce and remarry. This caused a rift between the Church of England and the Church of Rome, so another act was passed, that was the Act of Supremacy, and this made it law that the ruler of England was head of the Church in England and separated the English Church from Roman rule. The next uh, monarch that we showed you... You said that without reading, so it's amazing. Incredible, so knowledgeable, this girl. Elizabeth I, and the date there was 1588, which was the Battle which of, of course, the Armada. Which, of famous for what? The Spanish Armada. Mm -hmm. Which is when the uh, Spanish fleet was completely wiped out by the uh, supremacy of the English Navy, um, spread all across the Atlantic and the Pacific and wiped across central China. <laughs> Dozens of them all over the place. Never eaten in their restaurants since, right? That was right. 1588. That, that was that. Let's clear that one up. Then the third and final monarch was Queen Victoria. The date we gave there was 1899, which was the relief of Mafeking. And the siege actually started on October, went on for 217 days. The garrison was commanded by Colonel Baden Powell, who seemed to have been uh, more concerned with the social aspects of the siege rather than the military. He organised concert parties, <laughs> afternoon tea parties, Cockney sing songs and was renowned for his impersonation of Paderewski, in which he wore a mop on his head. And he wrote tracks on pig sticking, and he was, of course, uh, famous for founding the Scout Movement. We then asked you what famous catchphrase was associated with Queen Victoria, <laughs> and that was, of course, Ooh. we are not amused. And her other right, famous catchphrase that. was, there's only one Hoody Elbow, but that yes. was later and in the reign. And this is what they want. And the three <laughs> this winners are... Uh, Eat uh, Prince Albert. Uh, Adrian Austin. Oh. <laughs> Never mind, you can all have prizes. 71, the borough. 
downtown in Salisbury. They win spit puppets. How many have you picked? Diana Ross LPs, just one. Thank heavens for that. Right, I've, done, uh, I've done Roger McGough's book. Yeah. Roger's here somewhere. We've got so care. many to get rid of. Uh, Helen Rose from Tyso up the road there in Warwickshire. Morning, darling. Uh, there's all the usual goodies for you. Uh, Henry VIII. No, he's not the winner. That's one of the names. Mark Richmond. Sorry, Henry VIII is who won this competition. Mark Richmond from Holly Lane Erdington. Oh, magic bed. Brian Erdington. And uh, also from Andrew... Job or Job, I think you probably pronounced that. Job, you're um, eight years old and you're from Sheffield, South Yorkshire. Ah, well done, lad. Okay. Good one. Right. right, I think we will move back swiftly on. And it's time actually to rejoin Chris for the final edition of Compost Corner. Oh, great. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this, the <laughs> very sad moment, this, because this is the final compost corner. <laughs> As you know, last week we did the penultimate compost corner. <laughs> and of course, it's such a long, long, long time now since we did that very, very first ever compost corner. <laughs> There's been so many to think about, really, over the years. The number and number of times I've stood here saying compost corner. <laughs> You've stood over there saying compost corner back. Compost corner! <laughs> and this is probably the last time I shall ever say it. But uh, all sorts of guests dropping in on this final compost corner will be. Compost corner! We'll be talking to a man who put whiskey on his shallots and got onions that came up already pickled. But first, my very special guest, coming centered of the soil, guardian of the greenery, David Bellamy. Yeah! In well, Chris, it really is terrific to be back on my oh, favourite nice world. Well, it's nearly all over. As Percy Thrower said as he finished the muck spreading. <laughs> this is the stuff. Divine inspiration, Chris. That'll do for me, CC. Really confusing your impression. Oh, baby. terribly sorry. What exactly are you going to do during the course of the summer? The many, many months lying ahead. Ah, I'm very glad Don't you asked that. me that question, Chris. You see, it's for this very reason that I couldn't see into the future that I've resorted to predictions. Now then, I brought along this very, very special special plant here with me today. Extraordinary. Yes, it's called the Hudus Elbus plant. Now then, it's a very unique plant. In fact, I never realised how unique the creature was until this morning. What's so unique about it? Though? Well, Chris, as I was twundling my wheelbarrow through the streets this morning, I heard this strange, eerie chant and following me all over the place and it kept repeating, repeating, <laughs> repeating. <laughs> Again, Chris. <laughs> Here we isn't it? It's somewhat unceasing. Now then, this striking creature is really wonderful. It's really bright and alert, and just note the colourful foliage. Well, if I may say so, they look remarkably like a pair of dirty old greasy pajamas. Ah, well, you see, this is like most other plants. It tends to spend most of its time in its beds. <laughs> In his bed, a flower in a bed. Well, I am dry this morning, Chris. Well, I'm sure we can rectify that. It's, that's what I'm just doing. <laughs> 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 Come back to Cadwood and that, buddy. 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 Come back to Hey, now, the, the, most, the most remarkable thing about this plant, Chris, is its great power of foreseeing, hence the glasses. What? Why should it have glasses? Well, it's foreseeing. <laughs> the glasses foreseeing. <laughs> this is what they want. Hang on, then, I'll, I'll just... Um, Press I'll just the remote control push button. Push a remote control button. You are right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Try another one, Chris. You might get a whip tickler. The grape... What's small and round and burns cakes, Alfred the Grape? What's small and round Have and you burns noticed, cakes, Chris? Alfred the Grape? Have you noticed, Chris? <laughs> that it never seems to laugh at its own jokes. Uh, nor does anybody else, I've <laughs> I've seen it in cabaret. 
<laughs> but it does tend to giggle a lot, especially if you stick your finger up this little old fist. <laughs> Here, have a go. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Find its brains up there. Oh, oh, shall we some quit? sort of prediction, though. Ah, well, I've got a bit of paper here. <laughs> now then, I must get some new cakes, quiz. It's all right. A Pakistani family's just moved in. Right. Now then, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just write my question down on this. Yes, get back into the impression. I'll just write this wonderful right, prediction right, right. down. Thank right, you. I'm going to walk down the street now. I'll just walk down, that'll do for me. I'll just walk down and <laughs> write down my prediction on this bit of paper. Will I get any work after tis was during the summer? Stuff it, in, me, <laughs> stuff it in its gob like that and see what happens, Quiz. <laughs> <laughs> you will get a job. You won't 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 get a job. You will. You won't. You will. You won't. You will. You won't. Overload. Overload. Oh, knick knack. Overload. Overload. You won't get a job. You won't get a job. You won't get a job. You will. You won't. You will. You won't. You will. You won't. This has been mercifully more than enough from this week's last ever compost corner. Next week for absolutely nothing. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. I said it, go, go. Here we are. And uh, the results of the competition I set last week with, to win the two lovely Charlie the Monkey poets. Lovely. There's one of them. And I asked you to send in a four line poem. We've got two winners I picked out. The first winner is Paul Bennett of uh, Windmill Road, RAF Marham, there I'm in Kings Lynn, Norfolk. What do you say? And uh, his, his poem is, Charlie the Chimp so handsome and sweet, I'll miss him with no tizwas each week. What will he do for holiday fun? Go to the jungle and stay with his <laughs> mum. Right, that's one. The second winner... Just the iambic dactylic spawn there, I thought. In that I thought almost that. The second winner is Joanne well, Stewart of 95A Downs Road, uh, Ice Deed Rise, North Fleet, North Fleet. And her poem is, I love Charlie Monkey, he's so lovely and sweet. But we only see him, we only see the top of him. <laughs> cool, I bet he's got smelly feet. Thank you, oh, Charlie. Because the two winners, they'll be winging their way to you. Beautiful. Can I very quickly show you this as well over here, if you can swing oh, the camera around. I know we're in all sorts of confusion this morning. Uh, oh, have a little look at this. This is, this is our, our resident artist, Roger's had a go at this. And he's actually trying to depict the, uh, there he is, hold up to you over there. He's trying to de depict the scene as I'm sort of, I'm leaving the studio, as you can see, because you know there's a last scissor right over there. It's David Bellamy seems to be sort of ferreting about between my knees. The Phantom's throwing a last pie at me. The cameraman seems to be cheering. I don't understand oh, that. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm hot. Try the hold. Camera five, camera five, camera five. Camera five, camera nine. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, that's it. Oh, he's over there now. He's actually getting hidden amongst all these people down the studio. It's very good. Have a little look at that. Excellent. Excellent. The hoodie actually yeah. spark out on the floor. Yes, as long as you don't touch his nose, he's all right. Yes. Well, that's, from, that's from Rog. Thanks ever so much, Rog. That's smash Rog. Take that out, and hang it up. You're right over there. You're still working away on one, one of many, actually, very quickly, aren't you? And who the other? We'll, we'll try and see those as the morning goes by, but it, as you can probably imagine, it's getting a bit chaotic. I've never seen so many people in one studio in my life. Ah, it's amazing. amazing. Right. Something else that we'd set you last week when Michael Palin was here. Um, Exhibit this. If you can, if you can try and explain this very briefly, um, if you remember last week, Mike Payne's a great uh, train fan, and we showed you three steam locomotives and asked you what was their classification. Let's have a little look at those. Classification, of course, I'm still on that one over there. It's very difficult with this. Classification, of course, means the uh, the number. You basically you count the wheels. There's none at the front. This is the first one we showed you. None at the front, six in the middle, and none at the back. So right, there's three this side and three the other side. Not six zero. The second one. Is four six zero. Oh, you see two at the front there. That means four on two on each side. Four, six in the middle, and naught at the back. And the third one, two six zero. Oh, they are nice and easy. That one, two six zero. Oh. A lot of a lot of you train freaks actually got very keen on this one. Tremendous response. These marvelous. We're showing four of these. We also said before the railways were nationalised, they were owned by four major companies. Which lines did they actually control, and where were they? Have a little look at these again. We we'll just check them. Uh, LMS, London Midland Scottish, used to run right up there, right through up to, well, central Scotland, what it says through the Midlands. The southern region used to run down to the south coast ports. LNER, used to London Northeastern, used to control uh, the northeastern side of the country, right up the east side there, past Peterborough and Grantham, 
sort of just skirting Norwich. And the Great Western Railway, which uh, I was brought up on, the Great Western used to take you right down to the West Country from London. They're all based on London, but they all went to the various parts of the country. So it's GWR, LMS, LNER, and Southern Region. Right, well done. Right, we've got two winners with three picked. Have, have you got them? We've got them somewhere, yes. No, I haven't got them. I haven't got them, so no. Where's Christy? Uh, Christy, somebody's have got, you got, got them. Winners on, the train. Come on, the winners. Come on, who's hiding them? Come on, them? we've got a beer somewhere. Who's the winners? Just quickly, Come while on. we're doing that, I must, I must say that, um, <laughs> I'll show you, remember that last, oh, thank you very much, last week we showed you a clip of a film uh, called The Time Bandit, which Michael, Michael was involved in. We did say that the, uh, the actor who played the part of Randall, uh, we, got the, we gave you the wrong name, the part of course is actually played by David Rappaport, so sorry about that Dave, David oh, Rappaport played that. that part of Randall, right. But anyway, to continue, the train competition winners <sighs> are Ian McGuinness of West Derby in Liverpool, Anne-Marie Williams of 14 uh, Herbert Street, Gloucester, and Stephen Essery, who's 12 years old, from Newport in Gwent. Well done, you lot, we'll be sending the train sets to you. And now a television first, and probably a television last. It'll be really? the first and almost certainly the last time you ever see Cop the Cat and Spit the Dog wow, is the world ready together. For this? to play Plan Your Family. Hello and welcome to Plan Your Family, the giant fun fun family show where we say hello and welcome to Plan Your Family. This is basically a giant development of that normal popular evergreen favourite Plan Your Folks. Basically what we have is one small child and everybody we could find from one family, grannies, aunties, uncles, the lot. This is the Topham family from Blackpool, that's right, isn't it? The Topham family from Blackpool. Keep nodding your heads, right, fine. Okay, right, now I'll just briefly explain the rules to you. What's your name? James Topham. James Topham. How old are you, James Topham? Eight and a half. Okay, righto. Now, I'll briefly explain the rules. I should be asking you a number of very simple questions. Now, if you get them right, I should be giving you our full surprise here, helped by the lovely hostess Flanderella behind you. And your mother, aunties, and grannies will be getting buckets of water and custard pies. Okay? Now, if you get them that's not fair so far. If you get them wrong, you still get armfuls of prizes, but your fathers, uncles, brothers, and brother-in-law. Uh, they get the custard pies and the buckets of water, okay? Oh, and if you drop, uh, if you drop any of the prizes, this noise should sound. <laughs> there it is, right on cue. <laughs> okay, I'm fairly sorry, but I'd better go through those rules again. <laughs> okay, I think I've got those. Right, uh, now then, it's, what, what's your name again? It's, it's James Topham. You're not nervous, are you? Is this the first time you've ever played uh, Flanny Family? Correct! It is the first time you've ever played Plan Your Family. Well done. Well done. Well done. Make sure you don't give any pies to the wrong people, Phantom. Don't confuse the issue. Right, right, we've got the signs around. Right. Question number two. Nobody's got any spray there, do they? Right. Question number two. It's a shame. Right. Question number two. Why do, why do so many... Concentrate, please. Why do so many male Chinese cats keep looking through people's windows? You don't know. It's because they're peeking toms. I must count that as a wrong. I'm sorry, they're peeking toms. Sorry, that's wrong. That's completely wrong. Oh, that's... You're coming to stand over here, right. Lovely balance contest so far. <laughs> Question number three. Question number three. Are you still there? I'll move around the other side. I'm struck in the gangway. What top Russian composer and pianist often had to stop during recitals Look at state. Look at state of Sorry, what top Russian composer and pianist often had to stop during recitals because of a violent attack of itching? Sorry, that's another wrong. It's Scratch Man enough. I'm sorry about that. No, I... <laughs> Woo! What do you mean you'll get me after? Shut up on the end. Be quiet. Be quiet, Mrs. Topham. Right. Question number four. Question. Question number four. We'll never get through this. Do you know the... Are you paying attention? Sorry. Do you know... I'm talking to that bloke over there. Do you know the opening ten lines 
of Puccini's marvellous opera, La Boheme. No, you don't. No, that's correct. Nor do I. Couldn't care less. Give me ACDC anyway. Oh, dear. Sorry about that. Just as things were getting really exciting. Once again, the time for us to wind up and say goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Thanks again to the Top and Family for a marvellous, marvellous concert. Join us again next time. That's the last time we'll probably ever play Plan Your Family. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. It must be nearly Saturday night. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Outside my window. There he is, there he is. So, that was Dave Edmonds and almost Saturday night. Oh, it's nice to be out in the outdoor for a minute. Sometimes I think my head's not right. We've survived the plans for all these years. Explosions galore and children's tears. Now, right to the end, I must have love up the bucket. A water support. Let's go! Let's go! Please let me go, my wellies, and you can smell them. They are old crackers, that's the way I tell them. With a lick like mine, I need a soap. I'm in the bucket of water, the water, I'm in the bucket of water. I say good luck with a silly trick. An elephant's water gets another class. With the help of Norman, say the magic word. I can be, Abra, this is absurd. I'll make some bunnies if I only can. in the bucket of water. Nice, darling. I think now we ought to have a medley of music to bang one's head to. You're not thinking of playing this sort of stuff as we walk down the aisle, are you, Charles? Almost certainly, darling. You see, on one's wedding day, this is what one wants. Charles. <laughs>
and gentlemen, once again for the incredible El Escapo. <laughs> Quite simply, the greatest escapologist, the most fearless man the world has ever seen. A man whom no ropes can bind, no chains can fetter, no fortress can contain. A man who made the death cell of Alcatraz look like a windy house. Once again this morning, he will defy his own mortality. My lovely assistant, better late than never, Gloria, will secure and shackle him inside this mailbag, simultaneously releasing the props are over here, Gloria. Six grenades of nerve gas inside the sack, having first placed inside the bag nine black mamba snakes, eight king cobras, seven bowls of piranha fish, six stinging scorpions, Five oh, golden oh, rings. Sorry, I've, sorry, I've turned over two pages at once. One man-eating shark. One ATV canteen steak and no, kidney pie. No, 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 no. Okay, no. okay, okay. We'll cut the steak and kidney pie from the ATV canteen. One rape bill. One photograph of Sir Keith Joseph. One coil of electrified barbed wire. And one child's pet budgie with rabies oh. and in just 30 seconds he will escape yet again from the jaws of death <laughs> throw in the gas grenades and seal the container gloria please one two three And you rather sadly back to the studio. It's jelly, silly time. Oh, that's about it, really. Uh, I suppose after seven years of doing this every Saturday morning, uh, it's all a bit sad, really. Uh, don't forget that Tiz Was will be back on your screens in September with the fabulous Miss James and uh, several new faces. Uh, but for several of us this morning, uh, in my case, after something like 300 programmes, I think, uh, this is actually the end, the last one I shall ever do. Um, I think we should close very fittingly with, our, with that marvellous, <laughs> classic piece of drama, the death scene from that greatest of all Greek tragedies, the death of Heraclitus. It is the end. There is nothing more to hope from this life. Pass me the cup, as I may walk in the shadow of death with you, my master. No, tis I must lead the way. <laughs> oh, break my hopeless heart. I cannot live without my leader. Wait for me, Heraclitus. Where you go, I shall follow. Quickly, Silver Sword, for I am anxious to be among the gods. Oh! It is the end of all things. Zeus, Apollo, I come. 
Oh, I don't know, Chris, you know. No, I mean, it's a bit sad for an end, isn't it? Endings are supposed to be sad, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, Chris, but not that sad. So it's a classic tragedy, one of the most perfectly constructed tragedies of all time. Still sad, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Perhaps we're playing it too sad. Yeah, that's it. Use the same classically constructed tragedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But with less sadness. Yeah, more fun. A few laughs. Great. Yeah. All that. Cue John. It is the end. There is nothing more to hope for. Pass me the cup, pal, and I may walk on the shadow of death with you, my master. Wee no way, fish face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hang on, what to do with the ale? Oh, break my hopeless heart. What's for me, Heraclitus? Where you go, I follow, pal. Wee hey, there's no Down in one. <laughs> Ron Saunders. He's not Greek, How is did he? he get into it? I saw him in a Greek restaurant once. Never mind all that. I didn't even get a drink. The Prince of Denmark. Huh? Well, I've been there for a pint. Been there. The Prince of Denmark, <laughs> Shakespeare, Hamlet. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, a tragic ending, but with the central character still retaining his equilibrium. Yeah, almost certainly. Hamlet. <laughs> Hamlet. <laughs> I die, Horatio. The potent poison quite o'ercrows my spirit. I cannot live to bear the news from England. But do I prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras? The rest is silence. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's quite yeah. what the bard had in mind, though, CT. No, it still no. wasn't very accurate, oh, no. was it? Yeah. it wasn't... See, I think we're going about it all wrong. It's a bit too low-key. Yeah. That's right, actually. Yeah, yeah. We want to go out on an up note, don't yes, we? Yes, a big finish, yeah. a big musical extravaganza. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not right. Exactly no, not really. No. I know. What about a definite payoff? You want me, you'll have to come and get me. You better be a nice boy, Rico, and come out. You're right, Rico. You want me, you'll have to come and get me. I'll be with you in a minute. This is your last chance, Rico. Are you coming out or do you want to be carried out? like you and I are going to take that little ride together. Oh, oh we ain't. I told you a little buzzard like you will never put any cuffs on me. You should have come out when I told you to, Rico. Ah. Mother of mercy. Is 
this the end of Rico? Well, it was a payoff. Mm. It's not exactly going to set people up for their summer holidays, though, is it? Mm. <laughs> love interest. What? You know, love interest, kissing and cuddling. Brilliant. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come here. Oh, not you. Really? A big screen clinch. Oh. Ooh, Jackie Palo. <laughs> <laughs> 